When it comes to living in Tampa, Florida, people usually only want to talk about the good things. They want to talk about the flip-flop lifestyle, the outdoors, the sunshine, and the beaches, as you can see behind me here. And I can't blame them, right? It was a little over five years ago, actually it was five years ago this weekend, when me and my wife Kate jumped on a plane, flew down to Tampa, drove over to Indian Rocks Beach, where I'm standing right now, and began our home shopping journey. And let me tell you, it has been quite an experience, right? So if you want to know why we came down here, besides this beautiful little nugget here, and this beautiful lady here. Um, you know, it's not that complicated. Let me just give you a slight glimpse here. What's going on? Oh, it's phenomenal. Yes, that's real life, folks. All right, so um, it is 87 degrees, but the wind is blowing and it feels amazing. So. You gotta take a flap We had to fly down here twice had multiple offers declined. We ended up having our real estate agent, you know, do FaceTimes with us and getting our house site unseen. And, you know, it was pretty nerve wracking, I'm not gonna lie. But we were so excited, right? We believed and we bought into that ideal that, you know, it was gonna be sunshine, lollipops and rainbows every single day, which we all know isn't true, but that was our belief so much so we were willing to buy a home without ever actually stepping foot in it or knowing exactly where it was. Kate had only a few simple rules when it came to the house. It couldn't be more than 15 minutes from the beach. It needed to have at least four bedrooms so we could entertain family and it had to have a pool. And I'm happy to say we were able to find all of those things, but man, there was a big leap of faith to make that happen. Now, we have learned a lot since then. In the last five years, we have been educated. Uh, for lack of a better terms, we have paid an ignorant tax. And in today's video, I want to share those lessons with you. And I'm going to share a quote from one of my favorite authors. He said, share the lessons without the scars. And that is the goal of today's video. My hope is that you can learn from our lessons so you don't have to learn them too. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Put your questions in the comments below. I answer all those personally. And if you wanna go deeper on a conversation, my calendar is also linked in the description. So do not hesitate to jump in there if you have any questions. And while you're down there, if you don't mind, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button as well. That way you can be notified every time we drop a new video just like this. I wanna get into some of these lessons because I gotta be honest with you. We moved from Detroit, Michigan and had no idea what it was like to live on the Gulf Coast. And you're gonna get educated <laughs> when you don't have perspective. Now, my father-in-law has lived on the coast. He, he taught us a lot of lessons. He tried to give us perspective on what he could. But sometimes until you live these things, you really just don't know. It's kind of like having a kid. For those of you that don't have a child, um, you know, I'm, uh, forgive me, I, ha I have five. Uh, we have three together. And you know, I used to hear this when I was a young man. People would be like, you, you'll, you won't understand until you have a child of your own. And it's true, like things just are different. The way you feel, the way you respond to, to your child, like these things matter. And it's the same thing when you move to an area and it's new to you. There are things that you're going to be educated on, some of them good, a lot of them not so good. Um, and that's the goal of today. And you know, I wanna start with the obvious one is weather. And more importantly, hurricanes. We have been here for, this will be five years in December. We took possession of our home on December 9th of 2018. And since then, we have had three hurricanes potentially come across uh, our way. One of them ended up being well out in the, in the Gulf Coast. We never saw any experience from that. But since then, we've had both Ian, which was last year, and Idalia this year. And I don't know if you can see behind me or not, but if you look up on the sand dunes up here, half of these dunes are completely eroded and I'll show you a little bit more as we walk down the beach here and our beach has totally been changed I mean if you look here right now there's essentially a wading pool in between the beach uh, public access here and out in the Gulf of Mexico and I don't know when this is going to be fixed or if it's going to be fixed anytime soon what the game plan is the cities are working on these things but like at the end of the day the ocean right and mother nature We'll, we'll take back what is what is hers at the end of the day and man I'll tell you what you know last year with Ian that hurricane was supposed to be ours and it made a, a dog leg and hook down and, and just absolutely blasted Fort Myers and you know we have friends and family down there and it was really hard to see that um, and we planned on that being our hurricane and it, it totally changed how we 
approached living here in Tampa Bay. And I want to show you an example of what I'm talking about, right? So this is the beach access. Typically, the sand on this beach will come up to the end of that and it is completely normal for us to walk out to this beach but as you can see now it's completely eroded in the dunes here right it's just such a shift in terms of what what has happened and this is from idalia which just came through so i know this is super shaky but forgive me but i wanted to come down and show you guys what this looks like it looks like tampa is going to be pretty fortunate here and avert another hurricane but as you can see behind us our water is usually like glass you can paddle board out there and these guys are out here surfing well at least trying still pretty active. I'll hop back out here in the morning and show you guys what's going on, but just wanted to give you some insights as to what the beach looks like right now, so let's buckle up. And this really puts things in perspective for you when you live here, right? And I shared we were, we were ignorant about some things. Well, you know, we got really lucky. We bought our home sight unseen, and we didn't really understand what being in a, a, uh, a flood zone really meant. We didn't really understand what being in a hurricane evacuation zone really meant. You know, we took a lot of things for granted and we just assumed that we'd be okay. And um, thank the Lord, <laughs> we bought a home in a, a non-evac zone, even though I'm only two miles from this beach right now, which is crazy to think because, you know, St. Pete flooded, Tampa flooded, everything flooded with this hurricane that just came through and our home was virtually unscathed. We're like 38 feet above sea level, which is a lot. I know some of you are laughing. You know, we lived in Michigan, we were hundreds of feet above sea level. On a daily basis, some of you live in the mountains and you're thousands of feet above sea level, right? But for us, that's not normal. So these people on the beach here have been truly affected by this and our entire region has been affected, right? The state of Florida has really taken a beating here. So, you know, that's something that we definitely got educated on. The other thing that we got educated on, and I'll share this with you, is red tide. Um, this is something, when we jumped off that plane the very first time we came here with my five month old daughter, we jumped off the plane and we came to this beach because this is where we wanted to call home. We drove over here and it was September 8th or whatever it was. And we, we came to the beach and there wasn't a whole lot of people on the beach and we couldn't figure out why. We're like, well, that's interesting. It was hot. And this is another thing we'll get into. And I mean, it was hot, hot. We came down from up north where this is the line of demarcation. You start having cool evenings, right? It's 50 degrees or 60 degrees at night. The days are now, you know, 70s into the 80s. So we come down and listen, we've been to Florida a bunch of times, not like we didn't know, but it's just hard to wrap your mind around how different things are. And we showed up and it was hot, like 95, 96 degrees stifling. And we came down to the beach. And as soon as we crossed these dunes here, all of a sudden it just smelled. It smelled terrible. And I was like, what is that? And you're trying to breathe and you start choking, right? You're like, what, why are we choking? And it's me and my wife and my five month old daughter. And we're looking around, there's dead fish everywhere. And here we are, ignorant northerners. We don't know any better, right? We don't have a clue as to why this is happening. Well, it turns out that there was really bad red tide. Now, we've got our Pollyanna glasses on. We were making the move no matter what. We're like, oh, that's, that's interesting. We talked to some locals. They told us about it. Hey, this is a natural occurring phenomenon. It does happen. All right, great. So, you know, we, we tried to find our home. Like I said, we didn't get any offers accepted. We ended up getting accepted. The following year, no red tide. It was incredible. The year after that, we had red tide again during the summer and it was pretty bad. A couple months, it was just nagging. And if you came down to the beach, you would, you would smell it. You didn't really want to be down here. And then the following year, no red tide. And then the year after that, which is also the summer of COVID, red tide was terrible. So bad that we gave up the entire summer. We never came to the beach because it was so bad. That's the reason we moved here, y'all. And I'm sharing this with you because no one ever wants to talk about these things, but it is part of the tax of living in paradise, right? You look back here and you see this gorgeous beach behind us, but you don't recognize how difficult things can be and it, you need to know, <laughs> right? So I wanna make sure that I share that on transparent. It is September, it is warm, it's 90 degrees today. Now, the humidity is super low, it's been incredible since after uh, Idalia has passed through. I'm not complaining, right? I'm sweating right now, but hey, I moved here because you don't have to shovel sunshine and I'm good with that exchange. But this is something you need to be aware of. The heat is basically relentless until right around October. And then it's right around November when it feels like the Lord walks over, flips the switch on the furnace, turns it off, and now it's the Florida that everybody dreams about. 
That's why they come down for the winter. We have all the snowbirds migrate. For those of you that don't know what a snowbird is, that's someone who lives up north that only comes to Florida during the winter. And I can't blame them. I mean, it's incredible here, y'all. I get it, right? So that is definitely something you need to keep in perspective if you're considering making a move here. And hey, if you know anybody who is considering making a move down here and you think they'll get any value from this video, please feel free to share this with them. Next thing I wanted to get into is the, the cost of ownership when it comes to housing, because this is the big one. You know, a lot of our homes here, especially near the coast in Pinellas County, all the way down to Sarasota, are very old. You know, um, you know, I, I know that most of my clients, you know, reach out to us, they want new, they'll call me like, Juan, I want to move, you know, I want a four bedroom home, you know, something that was built in the last 15 years, no, no more than 15 years, um, and we don't want to be any more than 15 minutes to the water. And let me tell you, that is a very expensive piece of real estate what we're talking about because most of the homes here were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And because of that, in Pinellas County, where I'm at, Clearwater St. Pete beaches, there is no available real estate. If you wanna build something new, you have to tear something down that's old. Well, that's gonna be a very expensive proposition, so keep that in mind. Homeowner's insurance is very difficult to get here. If you buy one of these houses out here, some of these homeowners don't have insurance because they just, it's so expensive, you know, 20, 30, $40,000 a year, they're like, why even bother, right? A new roof's gonna cost me 40 grand, I might as well just go ahead and do it, even with their deductibles, which is 10%. Okay, so just keep that in perspective. Automotive insurance here. We have the highest amount of uninsured drivers in the entire country in the state of Florida, which makes our automotive insurance crazy expensive. So keep that in perspective too. That doubled for us. We went from 2,400 a year to almost 5,000. We are just short of $5,000 a year. And I don't have any, any personal action, nothing that I've caused accidents. We've been hit three times. I shared this with y'all before. Our cars have been hit three times, twice why we weren't in them, in them. And the third one, we were on the highway. Um, but I don't have any speeding tickets, no moving violations, and my insurance, just for me and my wife, one car that has is leased, and the other one that's completely paid off is almost $5,000 a year. We don't even have our kids driving yet. So pray for us on that, y'all, because I can't imagine what that's gonna be like. <laughs> so, you know, when you look at these things, they're not inexpensive. I wanna make sure that you guys can wrap your mind around these things. Another one of the lessons that we have gained, again, the ignorant tax that we paid, are the, the bugs and the wildlife down here. And um, I, mosquitoes are not really a problem. You know, we, I don't know if it's because we live close enough to the coast and we don't live in a flood zone, so we don't really have those problems. Mosquitoes here are uh, definitely not even as bad as they were back home in Michigan. So, you know, that's perspective. I guess it's gonna depend on where you live. If you live out in the boonies and you're by water that's stagnant, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of mosquitoes, but not been an issue for us here. Um, but the thing that is something to get used to is, you know, you've got, you know, several types of lizards that run around. They love to crawl in the house when you open the door. Geckos are notorious for like darting in when you open the door, you know, and they're, they're not going to hurt you. They don't bite. They actually uh, eat bugs, but you don't want them running around your house. <laughs> so you got to track them down and put them out. It's just one of those things you got to deal with. We do have snakes. Um, we've had very little interactions personally. I've had one snake we found in our yard and it has not near anyone and I haven't seen it again since I saw it twice and I never saw it again. So that's been there. But y'all, when, when we take the kids out and we go to the, the, the county parks, right? They all have water, fresh water. We're not taking our kids. We're not taking our dog anywhere near that because guess what? Alligators live there. And they're there, we've seen them many times, right? So this is something you just gotta be mindful of. You can't be out walking around and bring your dog right next to the water in, in some kind of fresh water and expect not great things to happen. So keep that in perspective. That is definitely something you wanna keep in mind. And there's just all kinds of flying stuff, right? The noceums we've talked about many times before. You got palmetto bugs, which are cockroaches. They gave them a cute little name they nest in the palmetto palms uh, but they're huge they're like this big and those bad boys love to come in when it rains really hard when we get a lot of water they'll come in all the bugs tend to rush in like Adalia just came so like we knew we were going to have bugs start coming in the house and it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be honestly because I was expecting way worse um, but it didn't happen that way so that was great news but this is something you do have to keep in mind if you're going to live in the area these are things you're going to deal with right um, like I said the cost of ownership overall we talked about homeowners insurance but like just getting things done on your home you know there are very few contractors and I know this is a national problem not just a Florida problem so I want to talk to you guys about this but like 
Getting a great contractor in the state of Florida has been difficult, especially in Tampa Bay for me. I'm a real estate professional. I have access to a lot of people, and man, it's hard to find good people. You know, uh, contractors as a whole do not have the best names, um, but I'll tell you what, the ones that do a good job do it well, so keep that in perspective, but it's expensive. I know it's expensive everywhere, but I feel like we're paying a premium here, part of living in paradise again, right? This is part of the deal. When you live here, you're just gonna have to deal with these things. And you know, there are a lot of people here who have resources, right? You look at these homes behind me here on the Gulf Coast, like there's money here. And you know, people know they can command top dollar to get things done. So that raises prices for every, everybody else, right? And not everybody here lives on these beaches or can afford to live on these beaches. So that's something to just keep in perspective. There are great contractors, people do refer them. I would encourage you guys when you come here to dig in, ask your neighbors, you know, hey, is this, you know, is this a good contractor? Who do you recommend to do this? We called somebody on Friday, had a, um, somebody come out and inspect our uh, air conditioner on Sunday. I mean, that is because of network because I knew somebody who had a great somebody in their back pocket, and man, what a great opportunity. He wasn't even gonna charge me to come because our system was in great shape, but I just wanted to double check on it uh, because we, you know, hard summer, things have gone on, and he didn't even wanna charge me, but you know, that's what I'm talking about is understanding who your network is and who you have access to because that's the type of relationships you wanna have because that'll get you to the best people. I'm not about trying to, you know, go to contractors and you know, get, get the best work for the cheapest money. That doesn't exist and I don't expect that from people. I'm grateful to pay a fair price when I get good work, right? So, you know, just know that that's part of the frustration here. You know, the insurance is expensive, like, like we said. The sun is always beating on things. That's something to keep in perspective. Anything that is made out of petroleum, right? Plastics, the sun is very hard on them. It's hard on your skin too, right? So just keep that in perspective. Um, it's hard on your skin as well. These are things that get beat up quicker, right? Your roofs don't last as long here. The window sashes, if you get them plastic or fiberglass, they don't last as long. The fences, the vinyl fences don't last as long because the sun is always beating up on things. So this is part of the, the exchange that you make when you're gonna come live in paradise, right? So like I said, hey, if you're getting any value, please feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. That lets everybody else know that these, that these videos have value. Um, and if you have any questions about buying, selling, and relocating the area, if you want to you know, consider this your home, reach out. Having said all of this, guys, I want you to know that even though we've had these challenges, two hurricanes come across our bow, had to board up our house, you know, we, we've had to ha have a roof replaced, insurance is more expensive, you know, you just got to deal with different things. We would not trade that for the world, right? Being hot all the time, sweating right now, <laughs> right, with you guys. I wouldn't trade that for anything. My wife loves it here. We built a life here. We love coming down. This is a Tuesday afternoon on the Gulf Coast of Mexico on September 5th, right? What an absolute blessing. And if this is the type of lifestyle that you're considering calling home, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. I hope you've had an incredibly blessed day. Go out and live that Tampa life.